What's up YouTube? My name is Ian Sandusky. Once again, welcome back to Let's Machine. Today we're going to be going over how to CNC machine in our Haas VF5 vertical mill stainless steel signet rings. I make them little, kind of like a pinky ring. But we're going to show you how you make them, can make them in any size using the equipment you have. Today we're going to be using a CNC mill, specifically again the Haas VF5. We're also going to be using a Sonic AQ325L wire machine and a polishing wheel. If you don't have this stuff at your shop, that's okay. There's a million different ways to do things. This is how I make them. Hopefully you can too. Thank you very much. Let's take a look, see what we can so do. So I programmed this piece up in Mastercam X9. Um, you can see I drew this previously in AutoCAD. This will just show you the outer profile. I'm gonna go in layers here and turn on the solids. And as you can see, this is just kind of a quick re visual representation of what this is going to look like when it's done, uh, when the blank is done. Obviously, we're going to have to cut the ring off there. These are tool paths. Um, I'm doing it with a couple of contours stepping in and a helical bore through the center. I also later added in a drill through the center of this just to cut out some of the machining time and take it a little easier on the half inch cutters. You can see there how far down they go. I'll show you here in a second the operations we're using. Yeah, you can see the speeds and feeds here. Pretty general for 303, 304 steel. This is what I use. Um, those are my depth cuts and multi-pass and all that good stuff. And coolant on, most importantly. So there you go. Second operation, this is a helical bore. This is getting, going to finish out the inside of the ring. Uh, I really like helical bores. You can obviously play around with them to get a uh, good thread pitch and finish pitch. Uh, I do like to finish with a um, helixing upwards. I find it gives a really nice finish to finish it off. So, you know, there's all our linking parameters and all that stuff. And coolant on, most importantly. Turn back on the layers. Yeah, this is what it's going to look like when it's done. And you can see here, there's just some little designs that I engrave on the front there, on that face. Very, very easy to do. We'll show you how to do that after. And bottom right there was the wire profile. So here's our tools. We're going to use a half inch carbide end mill. Uh, tool two is a 3 8 spot drill. And tool three is a half inch drill. Just using that just to pop through the center to uh, take a little bit of the work out for the half inch cutter. We're going to be working inside the Haas Automation VF5. Uh, I really like this machine. It only has a 7500 RPM spindle, but that's fine for what we're doing today. And we're going to be putting our piece inside aluminum jaws. And uh, the material we're using is 304 stainless. I have these cutoffs, uh, it's one by one. Usually I wouldn't make them this long for this project, but it's what I had, so. First things first, we're gonna set our tool heights. Uh, I did a video on this last week, I believe, if you wanna take a look at that, if you don't know how to set tool heights in this manner. Real easy, quick way to do it. Um, you know, this is a pretty accurate representation of how quick you can set tools using this method once you've done it a few times. I'm sure there are guys that can do it much faster than I can as well, but. It's a very, very easy method. Again, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses for this part of the operation. Um, if those tools break, they tend to shatter, and no one wants to get a face full of carbide or high-speed steel for that matter. And final tool, we'll just touch off that half inch drill and away we go. And just like in the last tutorial, we're going to touch off on top of our part. We're going to use the 3 8 spot drill because it's real handy for, uh, for touching off on parts. A, if you smash it, it's cheap. B, it's a single point, so you're not trying to uh, determine whether it's the tips of the flutes touching or anything like that. Just one point. It's pretty accurate, too. And again, we're going to use paper here. Um, you can use feeler gauges if you like. I use paper because I always have a scrap sitting around. And I just did a uh, time lapse 
of our operation running in the machine. We're running uh, Blazer Blazo Cut as our coolant. I like it. It works pretty good. Doesn't smell too bad. Doesn't go rotten very quickly. Uh, a little nicer for you than synthetic. So that's doing the outside contours. And spot drill. Drill. Ooh, nested up pretty bad. And there's that helical. And when we're done, this is what it looks like. So that's the profile, all ready to go. And we've run a few here. I actually ran them in two different sizes. You can see how much excess material is left on there. That's the women's size there, and this larger size is for the men. Next, we're going to take these and put them in a pretty simple vise. I'm going to pick up every single one, so I'm not too concerned about repeatability. Um, this is just the cheesy vise we have. And this is going to go inside the Sodic AQ325L wire machine. There's the program. You can see it's going to cut it at two angles. Here's a little time lapse for you. And the wire breaks at some point here and goes back. It goes pretty quickly, though. It's about uh, 10 minutes of cutting per part. Jogging the head up, and here we are. One ring, ready to go. So the reason I like to use the EDM wire machine to cut this ring off this block isn't because it's the most efficient way to do it or the most cost efficient way to do it. It's because we have one and I find it handy to have both those angles that I want on it, both the top and bottom, cut off on one shot. You could definitely do this by cutting it off on a um, bandsaw and you know just grinding it down to the size. You could do, uh, put it in your mill in a fixture and cut it off that way. There's a million different ways to do stuff like this. I do it this way because it's what we have and I find it easy to do. I can go work on other stuff, work on the engraving or whatever while it's running. If you don't have one, you can definitely try one of the other mentioned ways. Um, if you're interested, I can definitely make a different video showing how to do it that way too. But this is how I do it. One step, just like that. Pretty handy. So now we're just going to take the ring over to our buff wheel. I like to use these to take the edges off and shine it up nicely. Watch out, it will get hot here. Yep, there it is. So I dunk it in water periodically just to take the heat out of it. I'm going to break all those edges inside and out. As it is meant for daily wear, we don't want anybody to cut themselves at any point. And then of course we're going to polish the face just to take out any residual mill marks there. The finish is pretty good already from the machine, but you know we like to make it as smooth as possible. So again here, just basically polishing until it gets hot, dipping it, and polishing some more. Eventually here we'll finish it up, a couple more little pieces here to go, it's very important to make sure there's no sharp edges left at all. Not so long or short of it. There's a ring ready to go to engraving, nice and shiny, doesn't cut ya, perfect. So we're going to put this back inside the uh, VF5, I'm just using a 1 8 chamfer mill carbide and I just put it back in the exact same jaws you can indicate it flat or whatever however you want to do it that way I just line it up at the top of the jaws and there it is after engraving so when these are done and polished once more this is how they look this was an order I did uh, as a commission for a friend so there you have it that's how we make stainless steel signet rings using our Haas VF5 CNC vertical mill uh, Sodic AQ325L wire machine 
and a buff wheel. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. If you're interested and people want, I'll definitely post up the uh, DXF for these files. I'm not going to post my G-code because I don't want to be liable for anybody's machine that way, but it's pretty easy to do. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos.